uh, so it's number eight, and it says uh, it is written. It is uh, written uh, in the Torah, Dvarim Tori, uh, chapter Tori, uh, verses 12 and 13. Mm. It is not uh, in the heavens, and it's not across the sea. This implies that it is not in the heavens, that is, it is not found in a proud spirit. So, uh, of course, uh, this... Uh, this uh, uh, this expression you can uh, explain multiple ways, but that's how Rambam explains. Very interesting. It is not across the sea. That is, it is not found in those who travel across the sea. Very interesting. So people busy with uh, pro protecting the, the merchandise and stuff like that. They are in 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 a in a, in a, in a plane. It's too, too too crowded. To this to that. Therefore, our sage said. Not everyone who is um, excessively involved in the business will become wise. Our sages also commanded, minimize your business uh, activities and occupy yourself with Torah. Okay, so let's try to learn, uh, understand what it says here from the beginning of his commentaries and explanations. It is written in Advarim, in Torian verses 12 and 13 commentary. Rav Kapach renders this. It is written about, uh, about the Torah, emphasizing that according, that according to the Rambam, the antecedent um, of the pronoun it, and um, it in, in the above verse of the Torah, study, not Teshuvah, as explained by Rambam and others. Okay, no problem. So it, it is not in heavens. So Torah is not in the heavens. It is not across the sea. This implies that it is not in heavens. That it is not found in a proud spirited. So, person who is a proud spirited, right? This haughty person, um, he's not going to learn. He he's not going to allow anybody to be his rabbi, who, to be his teacher, to to be his mentor. And uh, of course, he is going to to make all of the uh, mistakes possible, and go exactly uh, opposite the Torah. Proud spirited commentary, the self-centered. Such is an attitude runs contrary to the spirit of the Torah, and ultimately prevents uh, from the grasping grasping it, as explained in the following halacha. So uh, it, it it says that many. Many times uh, Torah is compared to water, so water always go like from the high point to the lowest point. So it's, it does not go opposite usually, <laughs> unless you push it very hard, right? Uh, so so when when person is humble, person humble, the Torah comes to him right? naturally because he is in 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 the, in the lowest uh, lower level, right? Uh, but if he is proud. He is never, never going to get torn. Next explanation, and not across the sea. It is not the fountain those who travel across the sea. Uh, for uh, commentary for business purposes. In a contrast, one is advised to travel the study Torah, uh, as others relate, exile yourself to the place of the Torah. Right? So. <sighs> Um, for for business purposes, uh, I mean, people take the time. For example, in a, they they go to the, the to the business trips, or even uh, even uh, they they commute to work. It's a, a perfect opportunity uh, to to learn Torah. Whether you drive, you you listen to the lectures, or you take even public transportation, so you can read there. Or also. Uh, um, uh, listen, listen to the lectures, but don't don't waste the time. You understand? So even there was, uh, but uh, some some people since it's business uh, purposes, so they, they they don't study at all. In a country's one is advice to travel uh, to travel to study Torah. So if you know that, uh, especially in olden days, so there we have internet, so there are no no borders. But in olden days, yeah. So you want to study Torah? Okay, you have to exile yourself to the place of the Torah. Have to go there, even if it's not convenient, and uh, 
not as good as a place where you used to, but uh, in order to study Torah, you have to go there, you have to excel yourself. So that's a different uh, traveling across the sea. So that's a tra uh, traveling across the sea, which is uh, actually permitted and very advisable. Okay. So continue. Therefore, our sages said, uh, okay, not everyone who, uh, who is uh, excessively involved not everyone who is successfully involved in the business become wise. Okay, some, some, sometimes, uh, many times people think that if somebody have a business or they have money, they're automatically smart. It's not true. It's not true. If Hashem decided to give this person money, he can be not so bright. No problem. They say, so, I mean, he, he would uh, just uh, be bright enough to hire uh, smart people. To work for him and that's it they're going to run the company our sages also commanded minimize your business activities and occupy with uh, uh, yourself with store as, as we said the work is less than possible and Hashem is going to bless that amount and it's going to be enough for you uh, okay in most contexts, this word is rendered as business, thus employing in a, uh, in a blessing implied that uh, the ma manner in which a, a person applies himself to the Torah study should resemble a, bu um, a, bus um, a businessman apply himself to the business making in the center uh, matter of life, of his life. So that's uh, a little different approach, right? That then we used to, but uh, it's uh, that's also very interesting. So make a Torah your business. So like uh, all of these uh, businessmen, they do whatever they need to do. They sleep, I don't know, only a few hours a day. They they want to, to they have a, this a startup business. Whatever they they invest every uh, single bit of their energy into this business. So so they say make a Torah your business. So also invest a lot into into the Torah study.